will carry you on my shoulders as long as I'm able. Scare the monsters under your bed. Deep in the biting, liking for you is all I need. Until my heart gives in. Good morning. Um, I finished the sleeves on uh, my mom's jumper that I was showing you in the last video, the one with cables. And uh, the camera is really low. <laughs> um, this one that I done with the cables. So I have finished the sleeves and now I'm going to weave in the ends. And once I do that, I'm going to put uh, both that one and the other from Drop Snort uh, in fog color. I'm going to wash them and block them. And then probably tomorrow I'll come back and show you uh, how they look if they dry in time. This is how the jumpers came out. I, uh, I wove in all the ends, the two jumpers that I was working on, and I have uh, washed and blocked them. This is, both of them are done uh, using my in and out raglan recipe. And uh, that is a recipe that is free. It's free on my, on my blog. I'll put the link in the description. I spoke about it a few videos ago, but just in case you have missed that, I'll put the link. And uh, it's a free recipe that you can basically follow to knit this model of a jumper. I mean, turtleneck is optional. You can do whatever opening of the neck you would want and you can basically knit it in most of the weights of yarn so if you want to look at it by all means i'm gonna put the, the link in the description so this is one of them um, my preferred uh, my preferred model with a turtleneck and this one was done in drops nord i think the colorway is fog so the sleeves i have left them as bracelet sleeves but for the next one, because I have quite a few of them in bracelet sleeves, I might, um, I might make longer or even three quarter just to kind of uh, have something different. Sorry if I'm sweating, but because the air condition is just above me, I had to switch it off uh, for the noise and it's August in Cyprus. So this is unprecedented to wear jumpers in uh, this time of the year here. Okay, so I just wanted to show you this one. I'm happy. I mean, this is my my perfect my perfect style of the jumper. So, this is the drop snort one, and now I'm gonna show you the one that I made uh, for my mom. 
And if you couldn't get any worse, heat wise, here it is. This one is even thicker. This is uh, Drops Lima, and uh, that's 200 meters per 100 grams. Drops Nord is fourth weight, is 350 meters per 100 grams. Uh, but they come up, they both of them come in uh, 50 gram balls. So this is the one that I uh, was making for my mom. Her birthday is in, uh, now in September. And she, she, this is the one that she wanted. So I have also followed the in and out uh, Raglan recipe. But what I have done, it's a bit bigger on me. I mean, I could still wear this size, but it's a tiny bit bigger because she's, a slightly, uh, she's slightly bigger than me. And she told me the circumference that she wanted. So I went with that. And she tried it before I had knitted the sleeves and it fit perfectly. So this one I have also done, the, um, I have followed the same recipe, but what I have done is that I made the cable right here at the raglan um, increases. I didn't do it at the back. So the back, so the back is uh, plain. I have just done the two on the front and it continues here up the, down the side all the way to the bottom. Now, I don't know if, uh, if I can explain now how I did this. Maybe I'll try another time, but I'm just really hot. Or, okay, so let me try. Um, basically, with, uh, it, with raglan and with the recipe that I followed, my, um, you will increase at the body and at the sleeves. So normally, this cable, if it was not a cable, would be part of the body. But because now we, we have done it in cable, this part is kind of a no man's land. There are no increases done in the part of the cables in these six stitches. So I have put the markers for the sleeves, and then I have put the markers, but I count this basically as a body. Oh, I don't think I'm explaining well. I started uh, talking about how I did the cable while I was wearing the jumper but I got really hot so I had to take it off so I'm just going to show you like this and this is not a tutorial by any means I will not be showing you how to do cables you will have to do research on your own about how to create cables this uh, the one that I used here is very very simple if not the simplest cable it's composed of six stitches the first and the last are purl stitches and the four in the middle are normal knit stitches that I twisted every six rounds. But in case, now that if you know how to do a simple cable, I just want to tell you how I set up the stitch markers using the in and out raglan recipe. Um, so the recipe will tell you to how, how many stitches to put for the sleeve, how many for the body, um, depending on the, the size that you want. So when uh, the, sti the sleeve stitches are set up as normally and you don't bother anything with that, you set them up as normally and you do increases following the recipe. The body stitches, um, the cable belongs to the body stitches. So you will not add additional six stitches to the front those will be part of the body stitches that uh, the count you are given in the recipe but the increases are done on the inside of the cable so whereas you would normally do them here just before the, the sleeve just at the raglan increase you will treat the cable as a no man's land still keep the same count as you would if you were knitting without the cable but you would keep this as a no man's land, just do the cable pattern, but do the increases on the inside of the cable. So set up the sleeves, set up the body, and then place another two markers, six stitches in on this side and six stitches in here on this side, where you will be doing the cable, but the increases will be done here before, before the cable. Okay. I hope that made any kind of sense. I confused even myself, but um, it will have to do for now.
I wasn't sure if uh, I'm going to record today. In fact, I wasn't sure if I'm going to post uh, this Sunday. It's Friday now. And I still don't know if I'm going to manage to do it because my videos, they take uh, quite a bit of editing. So I tend to kind of like create them because I'm on like two week schedule that I set up for myself. And uh, I tend to create them throughout those two weeks and edit as I go along and then post every other Sunday. At some point I would like to bring it to every week but uh, I'm not there yet. So these, um, I left it, we're cutting short and it's also uh, getting darker. So I don't know if this is going to come out uh, this Sunday, which I suppose makes no difference to you because you're gonna be watching it um, whenever you're watching it, uh, but I would, I would like it to. So uh, it's getting a bit darker because uh, here it doesn't stay light until like um, 9, 10 o'clock like it does in some northern countries. So I hope the light is going to serve us. And the reason, uh, the reason why I haven't been recording as I usually do like throughout is because I had a migraine and today is the first day that, uh, that I feel okay. Now my migraines, if you followed me for a while, they are very, very strong migraines and they are definitely better in the past six months or so ever since uh, my neurologist put me, he put me on some pills for epilepsy that I take for about 10 days around my period because my migraines come at that time and it's night and day how, how better they are. But uh, however, when you have a migraine, it's not only the pain that uh, you would probably know if you have ever experienced that, but it's not just the pain that it creates uh, in the head, but it kind of affects your whole body. And uh, your vision is, my vision is impaired, um, it follows, the nausea is always there. And now for the past week or so, I didn't really, I was not in pain, but uh, I was nauseous all the time. So I just didn't uh, record. So I left it late and I left it late in the day as well. So we'll see how it goes. But I did want to uh, do a small short catch up uh, if, uh, if it's going to come out this Sunday, uh, the video. And I showed you, I just recorded uh, trying out uh, the jumpers that uh, I was working on in the last video. And I showed you how those came out. And they came out beautifully. I'm really happy how they came out. But um, I also wanted to show you um, something that it's, I'm working on, but I don't even know if it's going to work. Uh, I hope it does. Mm. But before I do, um, a few videos ago, I told you um, I told you that a company, one company that uh, makes pillows, ergonomic pillows, was going to send me um, a few samples to try them out and to give uh, feedback. It's not sponsored, but they did send me the pillows for free and uh, I did get them. The company is called uh, Zamat. I'm not giving you a review now, I'm just telling you that they came and that I've been using uh, the pillows for the past couple of weeks. I will give you the review probably in the next video or the video after that. But the company is uh, called Zamat and I will put uh, the link in the description in case you want to check them out. And I think they gave me a 15% discount as well for you guys to, um, to transfer to you. I will put that as well, but I have to double check that. So um, I'll, speak about, uh, I'll speak about the pillows more, um, um, as I said, in the next video or so. So uh, I saw something, that's what I wanted to talk to you about, and I'm hoping that I can actually manage to record uh, uh, and post on Sunday. I saw a construction on, um, on Pinterest, the construction of a cardigan. And this was not a knit cardigan. They do it by sewing. They, I think uh, it's um, the one that I saw, it was a crochet cardigan as well. And it's an interesting construction. I think uh, it's cocoon construction. 
basically the way that it's done it's a rectangle is created and you fold the rectangle um, to create bat wing sleeves I let me see I have a paper here how um, okay so yeah I think I should have done this uh, beforehand just uh, to give you the idea <laughs> just give me a sec so okay um, so rectangle is crocheted or knitted and then um, after the, after you make the rectangle you will fold these sides And make it uh, make this shape then what happens is that oh maybe I should have used a different color because this might be blowing out different color of the paper hopefully not um, so then this part here is seamed and an opening is left just at the very end so these become bat sleeves bat wing sleeves and with this opening in the end, then, which would come probably at this length, then the stitches are picked up and crocheted, or in my case knitted, the, the rest of the sleeve is knitted. But some of them, they don't even do this part. They kind of leave them uh, just this length. And it's like a cocoon uh, kind of um, construction of the sweater. Alex, I'm recording. Can you just give me five minutes? Sorry. It's okay. Just give me five minutes, yeah? Sorry. Okay. Um, sorry, that's my son. Uh, I didn't tell him that I was recording. Usually I tell them when I'm recording and they kind of stay in their rooms. So um, I want to try this out. And... Um, what I did, I was working on for the past two weeks. I have knitted that panel, that rectangle panel. If it works, it's going to make sense. But uh, right now, that's, uh, that's, that's the best way that I can explain it. Uh, so I have knitted uh, this rectangle out of my hand spun using brioche stitch. The fabric is lovely. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold these parts. Oh, let me try to do it in this fabric so maybe you can see it better. So imagine that this will become one of the sleeves. Yeah. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew them here and leave the opening here and then just build a tight sleeve that will, that will be for below the elbow. And then once I do that, once I create both sleeves, then what I'm planning to do is to go around this area and around the neck and around the body. So once I do the sleeves, I'm going to pick up the stitches that will go here all the way at the back and all the way at the collar and do a ribbing so sorry i was looking at uh, at the screen to see if it shows well and not at the lens so what i'm thinking to do is to create those sleeves in a black color as well as the ribbing and i think it would match this uh, hand span uh, brownish black um, very well I don't know if it's going to work. I hope it's going to work because I really like the idea of it. And hopefully I'm going to have something to show you in the next video. Thank you for watching and uh, bye for now.